Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hey, I just wanted to know how you're doing. I haven't gotten to hear from you in a while, so I just thought I'd check in on you. Didn't get to see you in like a week or so, so hope that you're doing better. Uh, once you're free, just give me a call back, okay? Bye-bye. VR chat is an extensive game full of all different types of people. And with people comes all the baggage they carry. Today I'll go over the good, the bad, and the truly, truly ugly of VR chat. From fun little worlds to hang out with friends in, to people drinking themselves to death. But to keep things lighthearted for now, we'll start with the good. This game is a medium like any other, and with that comes good and bad. The good being very prevalent, because if it wasn't, nobody would play it. When asked what the best thing about VRChat is, 99% of the time, everyone will come up with the same answer. Uh, making friends. The best part of VRChat is meeting people, making friends, and being able to create lasting relationships online without ever stepping foot outside of your house. Gods, it's the, it's the only reason I play this game. The most um, important thing for me at least is a way to socialize with my friends, meet new people. Going around and making new friends, hanging out with your existing friends. For someone like me, who only ever sees the light of the sun through my window pane, as I'm scared the pollen that exists outside that window will burn me alive. It's great. No matter how annoying you think you are or how obscure your sense of humor or how different you are, there's always going to be people on the internet in this game suitable for your taste of whatever you're into. I never expected when I started playing this game in 2017, after seeing some funny memes online, I'd still be playing today. It's my modern day Call of Duty. I'm sick of COD now, but VRC has replaced it as where I go to hang out with friends and talk sh for hours. It's no longer Kino der Toten, it's the pug. I mean, I mean, not really, I hate the pug, but still, you, you get the picture. VRChat allows you to just, just meet people, make new friends, and, and make those connections. It's a social game. I hang out, play games, explore worlds. It's fun. I want you to think about how many worlds there are for you to explore, with or without friends. There's so many. Admittedly, it's more fun with friends. There are entire communities set up just for this aspect of the game. World hopping, the adventure team being prime and center. But even I do this on a weekly basis. Go to the new and noteworthy section and hop through the worlds that look good, building up a database of all the good worlds. Game worlds, pretty worlds, chill worlds, adventure worlds, worlds where you question what you're doing. Worlds video coming soon. But worlds are truly the backbone of this game. You got the avatars you embody, the friends you make, and the worlds are what make the whole experience. It's the best part of the game. There is a huge amount of people in the world who can't go outside without assistance, whether due to physical disabilities or mental. So with that, VR allows them access to things we as regular folk take for granted. Conversing with friends, playing games, adventure, all in virtual reality, where you can see people's body language and truly feel a sense of community and connection with others. 
Okay, so for context, I used to dance a lot in clubs. Um, there was this one club that we had a collaboration with, and the owner of that club was a dancer as well, but they were actually in a wheelchair, so they could not like use their legs at all. But they were still doing dancing, uh, albeit in half body, so like with some limitations. It seemed like it was something that was really important for them to be able to like do this whole activity of dancing, even though in real life they wouldn't have that opportunity necessarily. I wish I could talk on it more, but I don't know any disabled people. I really don't, but maybe that's the whole point. VR allows these people to just be people. They don't get defined by whatever physical disability they have. Everybody who plays VR gets put in the same box. They're just people, players. They're rather different boxes. Uh, like like you got the furries and the and then the booth 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 people and the, the e boys and anyways, it's different boxes. But it's your personality that carries you more than whatever physical disabilities you have in person, in real life. That's really cool. Now, as most of you are American, you are subjected to the reality of being stuck in your small town, only speaking to people who know English your entire life. VR allows you easy access to the rest of the world unlike any other game. I mean, look at my friend group, it's the most diverse place ever, even though we, we do all speak English. There's a lot, a lot of people from all, all around, like Sam, who's British. Are you here for a ride? Uh, yeah. My third friend ever on VR chat. I still keep in contact with her. We're still really good friends, I would say. She learned an entire language on VR chat, learned Japanese fully, and I would think she speaks it fluently too. There are massive communities of Spanish, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Russian individuals who play this game. And so communicating with them, you have the opportunity to practice these foreign languages. After all, learning a language is all about immersion. Um, it's also a good way to practice languages in general. Like I speak Norwegian natively. I also speak English, of course. But VRChat has also helped me learn German uh, as a third language. There are a lot of people within the community that speaks a whole bunch of different languages. So you always have opportunities just popping up where you can actually practice it a bit more. I know plenty of people who learn uh, VRChat ASL basically speak to deaf or mute people and it's great. I used to hang out with Korean and Japanese players every day when I was in an Asian time zone. Not not so much recently though. It's it's the it's one of the best things about this game. It's the why it's the reason why I stayed playing it in 2018 in the first place. It was great. I'm a I'm a learning learning lem lemon. Lemon learning language. You know what they say about lemons? When life gives you lemon you you eat limes and do the time uh -huh. right tying into exploration earlier where you explore the creations of others you also have the opportunity to create whatever you want avatars worlds you can make anything you want so long as you have the imagination for it you can also make money off of it how cool is that there's a lot of good things that comes from vr chat like i said before friends hopefully finding some group of people that care about you to a certain extent learning new skills 3d modeling people start djing mixing all that stuff that's great for them there's hundreds of creators making content that allows them to live a life many of them couldn't have imagined a few years ago from all over the world. We have a lot of people in our group that like actually are able to make a living off of this game as a result of making assets, models, worlds, etc. I think that's a really cool aspect that this game has enabled. I say this every video, but VR chat is a medium like paint or line writer in 2006. You can make anything. You're only limited by your skills and your imagination. Any environment you can imagine, real or not, any avatar of any style creative freedom i don't i'm not i'm not a good painter like i did a video on painting and it's like a like a bat in a cave with with the water hello no one is available to take your call please leave a message after the tone yo where you at bro everybody's here but uh i don't think anybody mentioned you so i just thought i'd check Again, again. Anyways, uh, miss you. See you soon.
Think about this. Why do you play a game? To challenge yourself? To satisfy a certain desire? To pass by the time? In VR chat, it's social. You play VR chat to socialize. But it's like every game. You play League of Legends for five seconds, you'll get cussed out. It's bound to happen in VR chat too. You get good people and you get bad people. But just like anything in life, we focus so much more on the negative as it sticks out in our minds than the good, which we forget about very quickly. So here's the bad. If you ever play this game on the weekends, or even the weekdays in the evening, and the, and the day for some people, you'll come across drinking. Lots and lots of drinking. I think substance abuse is more common in VR chat than anything. Seeing how people can do it from home and feel safe and secure in their own environments and using that to justify abusing certain substances, AKA alcohol. The worst part of it all is this subtle pressure to join everyone else. From personal experience, I've fallen to this pressure. Everyone around you is drinking all the time, so you should drink too. At least that's the thought process that goes through your head. I did and blacked out, felt like shit and never did it again. But others don't stop, they keep going. And that leads to a lot of problems. This game enables drinking. There's no real way question about it either. Hopping into like different drinking nights or party worlds or whatever, people will be really pushy with like uh, getting you to drink with them. Like, oh, come, come take a drink, come drink with us, you know, come take a shot. For a lot of people, that definitely enables them to do so, which could lead to really, really shitty things. You would see a lot of people drinking every night uh, for continuous days, no breaks, and it's, it's pretty bad. Um, and I've seen that as well, like people just delving straight up into being alcoholics because of this game. There is a misconception that because you're at home, it's safer. And that's true to an extent. But you're also distracted, unable to properly assess how drunk or high you are as you're in a virtual space. There's nothing to ground yourself with. How can you be sure that what you see is real or not when everything you're looking at is fake anyway? I don't know. I've seen too many people who only get in VR to drink. And I don't mean just one beer to relax and wind down. I mean, binge drinking. <laughs> so I went to this event. I was there just vibing the music, talking to a friend. Person comes by, started chatting with us, trying to get us to drink. I asked them how their day was, and then they said, oh, it's, it was shitty, now it's gonna be A-OK. -okay. And I was like, oh, why is that? And they said, because I have a thing of Coke with me that I'm gonna do later. The moment he said that, he, he says, ah, f it. I'll just do it now. And then went to get his whatever thing of Coke and snorted right in front of me. It was a sh straight shocker. I had a friend in high school who would drink every day. Vodka, mainly. How do I know this? Well, because I played games with him while he was drinking. He'd always say, hold on, let me get another drink. We were playing Seven Days to Die or something. One day, his liver failed. He was 21. Like, what the f I don't know about harder drugs, but alcohol can f*** you up when you do it a lot, consistently. When entering VR chat, it's hard to avoid one glaringly obvious part of it. And that's how civilized everything is. To the surface, Everything is very cool. If you join public lobbies, you're gonna find e-girls, e-boys, full body people sitting in front of mirrors with their lack of clothing on their avatar, trying to look as sexy as possible. And that's how they want to express themselves. But there are other sides of VR chat where it's very wholesome, very chill. Avatars stripped down to lingerie because sells and it's easier to rig a bikini than a hoodie. Constant discussions about ERP, PST, and big PP Two of those don't really apply, but ERP, erotic roleplay, I think phone sex through VR, is real. And it's prevalent in places, unfortunately, that anybody and everybody can go to. I'm okay with it to a certain extent, you know. People can express themselves all they want. I don't really judge, but to do it in public and stuff like that, you gotta like 
have like no shame. <laughs> I don't know. Now, I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. I have nothing against the sexualized nature of the game. I'm all for it, but I understand the problem when there is no separation between these adult spaces and lack for a better term, kid-friendly spaces. The game's 13 plus, which causes an issue when those people, kids, gain access to places like Shangri-La, where people ERP have ease in a public world. Now the way VRChat approaches ERP and actual content in general is like this. It's allowed if it's not public. For example, a private instance that required an invite to get in, it'd be fine because you need an in to get in. A friend's instance or friend's plus, it would be okay because you need to be a friend of somebody to get into that instance. You need an in. Even a group plus would be okay because you need to be a part of the group to get in. But a group public, to do it in a public or a group public is against terms of service. And every time I join a Shangri-La and see trusted users getting away with ERP in a public instance, in a world filled with obvious <coughs> toys, I wonder, why hasn't VRChat done anything about it? Not that I care much, but others certainly would. I presume VRChat wouldn't want that part of the game to be prominent, yet it is. I don't know. I'm curious what other people think. But when it comes to avatars, there's further questions. I don't know what's okay when it comes to how sexual an avatar can be. I have seen avatars walking around where you can clearly see the nipples. For YouTube, absolutely a no-go. No questions asked. Nobody wants to risk it. I'm okay with it. It's annoying when I need to film stuff, but outside of filming, who cares? It doesn't bother me. It's a form of personal expression. But once again, what about when you're in a public black cat and there's obvious 13, 14 year olds running around you? Is it okay then? VRChat's obvious response would then be, well, you click the not safe for work button when you upload an avatar and it'll block it for them. But it doesn't. All of them are lying about their age anyways, so. At least for like the people that I hang around with, which is like mostly adult people, it isn't really an issue with us. But I guess for a younger audience, it could really skew their expectations when it comes to both like uh, content, body shapes, appearances, etc. So that in itself could, of course, be like viewed as a problem when you view this in the eyes of somebody who is younger. But I think from a more uh, kind of a like grown-up perspective, I don't really think it's that big of an issue with like the over VR is ultimately a game that allows people from all walks of life to socialize without leaving their homes. So of course, that's including plenty of people with mental issues. So in a very like generalizative like term, yes, it does attract people with like a lot of mental illnesses. As to whether it's bad or worse than compared to IRL activities, that is something that is, can be like up for discussion as well. I think that the reason that kind of happens is because a lot of these people who struggle with depression, social anxiety, this game is a way for them to get that social interaction they possibly can't get in real life because of their mental illnesses. Maybe they just aren't fully adjusted to society or extremely socially awkward leading to misunderstandings. I mean, everyone has their own things, but VR chat people like to, how would you say, over dramatic size their mental issues and kind of just base their whole personality or online persona with their mental issues. And to me, that's that's not okay. And there's actual people out there that's dealing it worse than you and you're over here complaining about your mental illness. But in reality, are you really diagnosed? And are you even doing anything to like help yourself get better in any way? Having a mental illness isn't a problem in of itself. Many are just normal, benign things. Take medication to deal with it. Have friends that can understand you and support you. But there's plenty of people who genuinely have things wrong with them and refuse to deal with it properly. This isn't a VR chat issue. It's an internet issue, a world issue. With the screen separating you, it's hard to find those red flags of a person being not all there. And that can lead to some scary situations. Several years ago, I made a particular friend on VR chat. She was a big extrovert. Always had crowds of people around her. Always had something going on. As she lived halfway across the world, we weren't super close. But even so, we'd hang out and talk a bunch. Christmas was coming up, and in our talk, she'd mentioned that she met someone new. She really liked him. 
She liked to dance and drink, and this person was also a dancer and a drinker. I was a bit skeptical about him, but we weren't extremely close, and I trusted her judgment. Within a month or so of them starting their VRC relationship, she told me she decided to fly to America to spend Christmas with this guy. It turned out to be a massive mistake. A few nights later, at 2am, she messages me on Discord. She was frantic and scared and didn't know what to do. She was foreign, so she didn't know anyone to help on this side of the planet except for me. She told me the guy she went to meet was very unstable. He'd always walk around with a handgun and kept her locked in his house while he went to work. He'd even made lots of threats of self-harm if she didn't give him the attention and affection he wanted. She was scared for her life. I told her I'd help. I ended up hopping in my car and driving five hours to pick her up. It was a little scary pulling up to this stranger's house, knowing full well they were armed and unstable. He kept the door locked in a way you could only unlock it with a key, even from the inside. She snuck into his room while he was asleep and got the keys, unlocked the front door and escaped. We drove five hours back and she spent Christmas with my family. The next morning, she got on the first flight she could back to the other side of the world where she lived. I'll never forget, forget that. that Christmas. Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Okay, uh, it's me again. I thought I'd ask the others to see if they heard from me, but they didn't say anything, so I just, uh, just wanted to make sure that you're doing okay. Call me when you can. Honestly, there is too much drama in this game. There's a lot of drama. Gods recently someone in our friend group left the server and then said the reason she left was because nobody asked why she left. That's a mind. You Sometimes you don't even ask for it and the drama comes to you somehow, even though you try to stay as far away from it as possible. But the drama never ends. You go to any public world and there's a 50% chance to find it as ever present drama. First world I joined looking for it and I found this. You know, his friend came up to me like mm -hmm. mocking me for like <laughs> myself. And <laughs> my whole thing is, is like I just like sent him like all the pictures he had sent to me like all of his <laughs> pics and like I love you messages and, <laughs> and I sent him his whole family, his addresses. And and you just sink into this never ending pit of drama. So there was this one club that I used to be pretty active in. At the time, we were like a pretty big dance club. The owner decided that we were way past due an upgrade to the map. They hired a person to create a map for them. The owner created a crowdfunder to like start funding this like, through the community. Like, oh, everybody, let's get the money. The alleged price for it was $2,000. A month or two goes by and bam, we end up with a new world. Was it good? No, it's absolute utter dog shit. A couple of months go by and some things kind of came to the surface and a huge circle of drama started happening where people had found out that the owner actually pocketed the majority of the sum uh, that was like raised to the crowdfunder. I think it was about $1,500 was just going straight into his pockets while the actual cost of the world was like around five, uh, $500. Interestingly enough, the owner was also found to be a, um, well, file because they had interacted with somebody that was like 14 years old or something. So that kind of just happened and the whole club imploded. It, it really feels like everywhere you go, there's so much drama. Oh no. I made a never met account as a joke with one of my, my friends. friends. In the process of using the app, I did find a small group of people who I thought were chill, since we all played Valorant. I didn't want to hang out with these people on VRChat, I was only interested in playing other video games with them. I added one of the group members on there to play Valorant, and for whatever reason, she became captivated with me. I didn't think much of it, since she was always in her own Discord server surrounded by simps. Her and I got to know each other, and over time we grew closer. I learned many questionable things about her, like her not believing in medication. I, for whatever reason, was blind to the red flags and made the mistake of entering into a relationship with her, even after learning that she had an OnlyFans account, which led to me having my doubts on if this was right for me. Eventually, she convinced me to help her record and produce ERP OnlyFans content with her, even though she only had half-body tracking, which you can imagine was rather awkward. 
Later down the line, she started pushing me to pole dance for her in VR, which I wasn't comfortable with doing, so I refused. Even though I turned her down, her request began to become even more demanding and discomforting. She had a thing for blood, and would ask me to send her a vial of mine every day, and other times would ask me to send her a vial of semen. Of course, I never followed through with any of those demands, and would tell her no, but she never gave up asking. With all these red flags, I still remained in a relationship with her. Months later, I started college and had less free time since I was busy with life. I was unable to provide her with the company and the attention that she wanted. She then cheated on me and that was that. Now I have trust issues, smiley face. What a story. Everywhere on the internet, there is the potential for really sh people to do really sh things. And VRChat is no different. No matter how hard the VRChat team tries, you can't get rid of the bad completely. But some things get even worse. And that's the ugly. This game is full of children. It's rated 13 plus. So you get a large amount of kids running around, inevitably interacting with the adults who also play this game. Usually, that's fine, because it ends up with situations like this. Whether in a second you just turn into a Wait, like why, a grown why up is there a book in my hand? All right, forget it, I'm pulling out the bazooka. Nobody move. It's like when you play Call of Duty. You don't think much about the people you play with. In fact, you probably want them to be kids, because then they'll play worse on average, boosting your KDR and ego at the same time. But VR chat is a social game built on interactions and conversations. And when kids and adults mix, and some of those adults have unsavory desires and end goals, you get horrible things happening. There was this one group in VRChat, which consisted of a lot of what I call like OG members of VRChat, which is like people who had started like playing back in 2018, 2019 or whatever. Somebody did like a whole undercover thing where they pretended to be a 14 year old girl and like knowingly told the like the owner of this group that they were 14 years old but they're like oh yeah well uh, like i want to meet up with you and like teach you how to be a woman so pretty clearly like trying to groom them there's like this whole one hour long video of them exposing them pretty much that they were like trying to get into their pants there is a lot of in this game especially when it comes to that aspect of like and uh, minors i have personally seen some of these horrible people unapologetic who, in my opinion, deserve either life in prison or death. The most notorious person is a guy named Tech Gangster. I have came across one well-known pedo in the VR tech community. His name was Tech Gangster. Been banned multiple times. Everyone knows his name. If you don't know his name, now you do. But he is very, very open about him talking to, I would say, underage girls and all that stuff. I've seen him in random publics like three times total, and every time, He's around one to three usually underaged girls. It's disgusting. He gets banned every time on every account, and yet he's consistently still playing. And there's also things you hear in publics, public lobbies, things like things like that, where it's it's kind of hinted at where, you know, sometimes people don't care about the age gap. And it's 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 weird. Moving on though, there is this subtle pressure as well to younger individuals to lie about their age. Catfish. I know several people who did just that. Usually 17, 16 at the youngest, but they claimed they were 21 or something similar. And nobody questioned them because God knows most of the 20 something year olds in this game act like teenagers anyway. They wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The problem is when ERP is initiated, then whose fault is it? The 17 year old who lied about their age? The older one who didn't question? the age of the younger one? I think they're all at fault. The whole situation is disgusting, but it's not like they're irredeemable. They're not exactly They were lied to. The absolute disgusting human beings who know someone is underage and still try to initiate blacks deserve death. Is it VR chat's fault though? No, it's just a platform. It happened in RuneScape. It happens in Fortnite. It's not VR chat at fault. It's just frustrating that we can't do anything except report these people. And they can just bypass everything by making a new account anyway. It's frustrating. I don't know. Hello. 
No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hey. Uh, just wanted to hear your voice. It's been a while now, so... You know, what is reality, really? I mean, think about it. I don't want this to be some weird metaphysical thing, but what is reality itself? Is there a world out there? Is there a future out there where virtual reality, VR, gets so good that we can't tell the difference between real life and virtual life? I don't know. You know, life sucks for a lot of people. It's full of horrible things, death, depression, taxes they're all on the same level and vr allows a lot of people to escape it they get in and they can at least for the duration they keep the headset on live a different life be a different person cuddle in piles of anime women that are actually 30 something year old men but there are people who take it too far i think in healthy amounts this game can be a good way to just kind of either practice socializing or just socializing in and of itself when you don't really have the opportunity. But then of course, on the other side of the specter, you have those people who straight up live in this game. And when I say live, they, they don't take the headset off. Like they eat in this game, they sleep in this game, they play games in this game. They don't want to get out of VR. Some don't have to. Maybe they inherited a billion dollars from their oil magnate grandfather and never have to work a day on their lives. But most aren't like that. Living in government housing while relying on disability payments? Spending every waking second in VR chat? It's debilitating. It's an addiction they can't break. I definitely have some friends on here who has 10k plus hours on VR chat. Not to say that they're chronic, but like, you know, they, they like to go on the game and just AFK there. But there are chronic VR chatters where this is basically their second life. They, they wake up, go to work, come back home, and then plop the headset on, live their second life, go to sleep in VR, all that stuff. Kind of just ignore real life responsibilities. Use this as a escape, which is okay, but to a certain extent, you gotta face reality. I know a friend of mine from Saudi Arabia, I think. They have 37,000 hours in a game. I think that amounts to three years or something. They straight up just live in this game. Like anything that releases dopamine, it can become addictive. VR can be nice. During the pandemic, I racked up close to eight hours a day in VR. But since we couldn't go out much anyways, it didn't matter. Spending a long day at work and then returning home to relax in VR with friends, that's cool. Helpful even. Let's you relax, chill. The issue is when spending every day in VR results in a gateway to everything else I talked about. Drinking, drama, dysphoria. Not just dysphoria about your body, but your life, reality. I think this is worse be because now, instead of just talking to a chat box, now you're actually becoming that character that you made, acting them out physically and talking to them with your own voice or whatever you use to communicate. It's the internet. You can be whoever you want to be, right? So you can literally just be another person on this game. Another thing to consider is that the sheer amount of people turning to VR as a getaway, an escape, spending all their time in VR, the level of it being a detriment to their real lives will only get greater, more numerous. It's VR tech and everything around it gets better. The companies who make VR, like Meta, don't care about the people ruining their lives through addiction using it. The more screen time, the more money they make. We are the only ones who get shafted. In, in a way, I do want that reality to come to fruition. Where VR becomes so real you can't separate it from reality itself. I remember my friend telling me he met someone new that he wanted to introduce me to her. I met her officially at the Midnight Rooftop World and we instantly clicked. She spent a lot of time worrying about others, making sure everyone was okay, just long enough to distract herself from her own problems. I felt I could relate. It started as a joke, calling her mom. We thought it was cringe and funny, 
But as time passed, it started becoming more sincere. Before we knew it, we had grown into a VR family. I had a mom, a dad, a grandma, and several uncles. At first, we just did fun things in VR, like pretending to go on family trips. We hopped to different VR chat worlds for movie nights, water park field trips, camping, and lots of picnics. Everyone was always so, so supportive and caring. Whenever the nights were difficult, I always had someone to turn to and hang out with. Our relationships evolved to playing games outside of VR chat, then to real life things like video calling, to do housework, cooking, working out, and eventually meeting up in real life. It all eventually came to an end. My VR mom and dad broke up. It was a fast decline in her mental health. I could tell she was trying to put on a brave face for everyone. She stopped showing up in public places, left every Discord server. If she got in VR chat at all, it would be only on her alt account. I got a call in the middle of the night from one of my VR uncles asking me to join our group chat call. She was in the group call and she was bawling and talking about how she couldn't live anymore, venting about everything that was happening in her life. She then left the call for about an hour. It was the longest hour of my life. We waited in the call, messaging her to come back, anything that would keep her talking. Once she joined back, her voice seemed to have completely shifted. She was no longer crying, and her voice was calm and monotone. I remember vividly the pain she was trying to suppress. From there on, the call was never empty. Every day, every night, we would take turns staying with her. I played day and night, learned all the songs she wanted to hear, and played them for hours while talking about anything that came to mind. I stopped going to university so that I could stay close to her and keep her company. I still had to go to work every weekend, 14 hours each day, without internet, without contact with her. I always got that horrible sneaking feeling every time I had to leave. One weekend, it was radio silence from her. I figured she just wanted some space and was told she switched to her alt Discord account that I didn't have added. Our other friends were still talking to her, so I tried not to worry about too much. During that time, I had a lot going on in real life, so I had to take a step back. I couldn't join as often, but would try to send her messages every day, or videos, songs, and video recordings of me playing piano for her. I was celebrating my birthday on VR chat. No one knew it was my birthday. It's not something I share, but I asked a few friends to hang out and drink. One of my VR uncles joined off of me and asked to talk to me in private. I could tell he had also been drinking, but it was the weekend, so I didn't think much of it. He told me about her. He said she had stopped responding to everyone, that she had took her life. I didn't believe him. I didn't want to. She promised she'd always be there for me. I had trouble understanding what anyone was saying. All of my friends were AFK when I returned. I sat by them with tears swelling in my eyes. I didn't know what to do. It didn't feel real. I messaged her asking her how she was doing and what she was doing in hopes of getting a response. She died in October of 2021. Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Just wanted to say that I miss you. And I hope you're doing all right. Wherever you are. See ya. Everyone dies. It's a sad truth we all live with. And unfortunately, that truth is very prevalent in game. Is so many people use VR chat as a social outlet. We make friends, connections, and just like in real life, those friends can be taken away. There was this one occurrence a year or two ago where I was in a VC with a bunch of VR chat friends. Someone happened to bring up, oh, uh, have you heard about this person? Uh, long story short, they found out that this person has died from basically major organs failure something was brought up by them drinking too much every day on vr chat and them just not taking care of themselves i'm lucky i've never had friends that i know personally die the longer we live it's only a matter of time I have two things that I can think of when it comes to that. Both were connected to a club that I was very active in. We had one attendee that showed up to the events pretty much every weekend. Loved by the community, really social, outgoing person. Only downside is that they were quite the heavy drinker, which isn't uncommon in this game, especially in the club scene. One day we found out that they had died while actually like while in VR as well. They pretty much just drank themselves to death. We don't know like exactly what it 
come to pass, but that's at least the information we got to know from their uh, parents because they had found, I think it was like on a Sunday or something, they had found him and he was uh, just, yeah, had the headset on and uh, was sadly no longer alive. Shockingly enough, it was also just like maybe two, three months after that, we had uh, another person who had uh, passed away, though, albeit not by like drinking this time, they committed. But they were also a dancer, like for the club, so they were pretty well known by the staff as well. It was a friend of theirs that had contacted us, like to tell us about it, because they had got an email from their friend set on like to be automatically sent, where if they didn't stop it, it would be sent out to like all of their friends. It was basically like a note that was like sent by email, explaining that they just like couldn't take it anymore, so they had taken their own life. There's even worlds dedicated to those who have sadly passed away. It's kind of cool. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. You know, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of good things about VR chat that people need to start stop being so close-minded about and start you know, actually seeing the good instead of just focusing on the bad. Don't live in this game. There's a world outside there. Go f touch some grass. <laughs>